Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Matt, I am the American Indian Gamer, and I figured it's time that I show you my loadouts that I use for Halo 4. Nothing too awful important, nothing too complex, just some simple loadouts, but some people have been asking me exactly what I use for different game types, so I'll show you what I use. So, for my loadouts, pretty basic stuff here, but one little tip that I will give that I think is really useful is to have a loadout slot that is just one you can play with and do whatever with. I have this one called Derp. This loadout slot, I just change on the fly. It's not meant to be anything. It's just when I feel like changing something or when I feel like experimenting with a loadout, this is what I use for that. I use this loadout slot for just whatever. So this is that's a really good thing. That way you can keep your other loadout slots and keep them for their specific purposes. And then you can use this to play with other stuff, to change stuff on the fly without having to worry about messing up your other loadout slots. So with that out of the way, let's jump into my basic Slayer loadout. This is a pretty simple loadout, pretty standard stuff. I have a battle rifle and a bolt shot, really standard for Slayer, as well as the fragmentation and jetpack. Those are all very standard stuff that you see for Infinity Slayer. But I also have mobility because mobility in the jetpack is really good for moving around the map really fast, being able to move around, get to higher places, get to power positions, link up with your team, get to power weapons first is really, really good, especially getting to the power weapons first, which you can see I have Drop Recon, which I've said before I think is a very, very underrated um, support upgrade, a very underrated perk in Halo 4 that I think is really useful. I was just playing in a match today where a uh, guy had Drop Recon during a Ricochet match. He was saying, hey, our rock Rockets are coming, our snipers are coming in. Really, really good to have. And then having that, I can see that maybe a sniper's coming in on the map with mobility and the jetpack. I'll be able to get to that sniper rifle really quickly, and then I'll have a power weapon. That works for overshield. I mean, it works for everything that's coming in. So it's really, really good to have that. I think it's a really good combination. So that's my Slayer loadout. Then I have my objective loadout. This one's a little different than what you normally see, because normally you'll just see somebody take a Slayer loadout and modify it for objective with just maybe slightly different perks or a different armor ability. But for this one, I have the DMR and the Suppressor thanks to the Firepower Tactical Package. Now, I use these two for very specific reasons. Now, normally I would just use a Battle Rifle, but the fact that I have an automatic secondary allows me to kind of get out of just using the battle rifle. So I took the DMR because it lets me handle the battle rifles from a longer range than the battle rifles can handle me. So if we're playing something like King of the Hill, Capture the Flag, Oddball, I can put fire on people that are working on the objective or defending the objective from a much greater distance than they can fight back from. And I think that's a really important thing to have, especially if you get killed while trying to get an objective, trying to get the oddball, then you can spawn back in, and from a distance, you can use that long-range weapon to take the person out. You could, of course, also use a light rifle if you would like, but I like having the DMR for it because it's just... You have to use it scoped and unscoped quite a bit. You have to use a mix of that, and I think having the consistency between the five shots, just it being the same scoped and unscoped, I think is really important, and that's how why I prefer that. Now, the reason I choose the suppressor as my automatic weapon for the secondary as opposed to an assault rifle or a storm rifle is mainly because it is really, really good at super close ranges. Outside of pretty much melee range, the suppressor is bad. I, I really do think that the suppressor is a lot weaker than it should be. Outside of very close range, it's very inconsistent and very unreliable, but when you're fighting around an objective, people tend to be a lot closer and clustered thanks to the objective. Like, if you're fighting inside a hill in King of the Hill, those people are standing inside that hill, or they're hovering around the flag, or they're around the oddball, or they have the oddball. They always have that objective and having the suppressor at that close range is actually really effective, and you can outgun assault rifles and storm rifles at that range. So I keep that around for those very specific situations. I don't use the suppressor at all until I get into those very close range situations. Then I switch to and tear up whatever's in front of me. And then, of course, I have fragmentation grenades. They're my favorite grenades. I love to use them for pretty much everything because you can bounce them around. They're so flexible. So I like using those just because you can bounce them into the objective. You can bounce them around corners, off of ceilings, off of walls, and hit them on the objective at maybe times when you can't even see them. All you might see is the flag marker that says, kill this guy, and you can bounce a grenade onto him. 
So that's why I like having those. And I have also coupled that with explosives so that when I throw a grenade onto a hill or near an objective, I have a much higher chance of killing or seriously injuring somebody. And that also helps me when I'm defending an objective. If I'm standing in a hill, standing by a flag, or holding the oddball, the nade spam I receive will be much more, it'll be diminished thanks to having the explosives upgrade. So I really like having that. And then, of course, I have regeneration field. The regeneration field I really like in objective game types because since everybody's clustered around the objective, I can plant the field near the flag, I can plant it near the hill, and then my team can use that to help hold the objective, help secure stuff, and I can really use it in a very supportive manner. One person with a really good regeneration field is a really big boon to the team. The only problem is because I don't have AA efficiency, it has a long recharge time, but generally, it's really useful. So, now let's move on to my big team battle loadout. Pretty, pretty uh, standard stuff for big team battle. A light rifle and a plasma pistol. Not really anything different there in that aspect. I mean, the light rifle is a really good long range weapon. I really like using it in big team battle, just like a lot of people do. And then, of course, you have the plasma pistol to help handle an EMP vehicles, and then plasma grenades to stick them to vehicles. You know, that's pretty standard stuff for a big team battle. And then I have the jetpack. Because on some maps like, oh, what is it, Vortex, there are some high platforms where just having a jetpack makes it really easy to move around some parts of the map. On some of them, like Ragnarok, I would instead use active camouflage because at a distance you can stand back and really scout things out and get some good shots. But jetpack is usually what I go for. And then, of course, being on such a big battlefield, mobility helps me move around the map. I can get from point A to point B much quicker than somebody without mobility, especially if I don't have a vehicle. If I'm not in a vehicle, I you feel kind of gimped when you're not in a vehicle. You can't really move around the maps really fast because they're kind of built to keep vehicles moving, so there's a lot of space to cover, a lot of ground to cover, and mobility really helps you do that. And then for my support upgrade, I have yet another perk that I believe is underrated. Sensor. Now, in normal Infinity Slayer and normal game types on smaller maps where it's like 4v4, I think that sensor isn't as good because your normal motion sensor range is plenty long enough to handle like a drift or haven. Your normal motion sensor is perfectly fine for those maps. It's 40 meters at that point. With sensor, you have a 60 meter motion sensor. And on a map like Ragnarok, Vortex, that is really, really helpful. Maps like Exile, having that extra sensor range really helps you spot people before they spot you. And when you have a long-range weapon like the light rifle, seeing somebody on your motion sensor before they even can see you on their motion sensor is a big advantage. I think sensor is really good for big team battle, and I don't think enough people run it. So I use that to keep a nice advantage on people so that I can get that first shot and really tear them down or suppress them and keep them behind cover. And then finally we move on to my close quarters combat loadout. This loadout... My, odd, my primary weapon is usually either an assault rifle, and sometimes it's a storm rifle. It just depends on what mood I'm in, but usually it's, well, it's always one of those two. I never use the suppressor by itself. The suppressor I always just use as a backup and objective. So I usually either use the assault rifle or storm rifle as my primary automatic weapon. Then, of course, I have a magnum backup. The magnum is a nice backup for automatic weapons, but I usually replace it with a battle rifle right off the bat. I'll find one from a teammate that dies or from someone I kill. I'll pick up their DMR, their BR, their light rifle, some kind of better ranged option because you do need that fallback. You can't just rely on your automatic all the time. You do need a good fallback option for when you just need that range. I mean, that just happens. The Magnum doesn't always cut that. So I do always replace that. And then the rest of my loadout you might recognize is what I put as my loadout for the suppressor and the weapon guide. Pulse grenades with grenadier explosives and thruster pack. Really close quarter centric stuff. And it's a loadout that I really enjoy using. I really love pulse grenades, especially in close quarters with an automatic weapon. They're just nice, fast grenades, and having two of them is just really, really nice. I really like using them. And then, of course, having explosives means I don't, I don't take as much explosive damage, and I don't have to worry about somebody throwing a grenade on me and then headshotting me right after they throw that grenade because. I may have had enough shielding left afterwards because I had explosives. And then of course I have thruster pack which is always good in close quarters combat. You can avoid melee attacks, you can avoid grenades. I mean with explosives in the thruster pack, if you thrust away from a rocket, chances are you're going to really survive that rocket. 
because you have the 20% damage reduction and you move farther away from it almost instantly thanks to the thruster pack. So there you have it. There are my five loadouts. Well, my four loadouts in my, my derp slot. There you go. I don't know if you would find any of this interesting, but some people have been asking, hey, what do you use? And well, here you go. But what loadouts do you use? What is your, you know, favorite loadout? What's your bread and butter loadout? Like the Slayer loadout, the Battle Rifle loadout? That's my bread and butter loadout. I go to that default most of the time until I decide it's time to use a different loadout. But generally, I do use the Slayer loadout. So what is your loadout? I want to see that because a lot of people like to play really different styles. And I always find it interesting to see what people like to play. So let me know what that is in the comments. And if you like this video, you know, like, favorite, subscribe, all that good stuff. Stick around. And as always, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for watching. My name is Matt, and I'll see you next time.